friends welcome to my channel go digit today because we know that pc22 is already been launched so today we will learn about the new features or some new concept which have been introduced in the business central okay so let's start so guys uh, as you can see here that uh, this is my pc22 environment sandbox environment so let's first go to the admin center so if I go to the admin center, you can see that uh, <coughs> currently I am having three environments. One is a production environment, another one is a sandbox environment of version 22 and another one is QA of uh, version 21.5. Right. So if I open this QA, then you can see here that I am getting two notifications. The first notification is that an update to the version 22 has been postponed. Okay. Although uh, if you see the second like uh, although which is the first one. So an update for the version 22 is available. Updates will begin on. You can see here that it being postponed to might be possible that 2nd of May. Okay. So currently we are in April, but it is saying that updates will begin on 2nd of May for my environment. And if I want to schedule, then I can always schedule my updates based on this settings. But somehow the version I cannot, if I want to update my environment right now, so I cannot do that because it has already been postponed by the Microsoft. If you want to more details, uh, if you want more details about it, then you can always click on this link and read about it. Okay, so this is the first one. Now let's go back again to the environments. And you can see that uh, initially when it was launched on 3rd of April, I have already created my new sandbox environment for 22 version. Okay, so it's perfectly running fine and there is no problem in it. So let's see in the vs code what are the new things which we can see and which we can work upon with the bc22 so when you open the business central uh, vs code first of all what you have to do is that you have to go to this extension icon select your already installed a language extension okay and if it is not installed obviously you have to install and when you install you will always be on the latest version but somehow if your extension is already installed and then it might be possible that right uh, right now i am not seeing that uh, button but you will see the button of reload required okay like the update is already been done automatically by vs code but you have to reload your vs code so that it will install your new version of the a language Okay, so you can see here the naming convention that a language extension for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. So this is our new extension with which we have uh, like Microsoft have introduced, uh, I could say two things, AL Explorer and AL Home. Okay, right now you are not seeing where, what they are, where they are. So let me show you what you have to do. You have to go to the manage, go to the settings and open uh, the extensions part and click on this a language extension so here in this you will see two settings let me show you show explorer at startup and show home at startup okay so there are the settings available here based on like uh, if you want to start the AL Explorer always every time whenever you start working on any project so I have set it up to always same goes with the home at startup if you want to open it uh, for uh, whenever you start working uh, on any project in the VS code or like never or based on whatever you want to you can set up the settings here okay so I have al already set up these settings as always so now because I have already set it up, how to open this? So the question is how to open this. So let's open this. What I can do here is that I can reload my windows.
sorry let me do it again I think there is some problem maybe let me save the settings and now if I reload yeah so you can see that now as soon as I reload after saving the settings I got my AL Explorer and my AL Home so basically AL Home is nothing where but it's just a uh, it's just a screen it's just a dashboard from where you can see the latest developer news of what's going on in the business central right so you can see here that on 3rd of April they are saying welcome to the AL Home and AL Explorer so this article is giving you the some information about what is AL Home what is AL Explorer and all about these things I will show you the use case of the Explorer so let's deep dive into it I can close the AL Home because it's just a notification screen now here it is AL Explorer and you can when you start seeing this you will feel that it is uh, like of a Cal based UI on which we Navision developers used to work upon okay and uh, it is uh, you can see here that it has certain sections let me describe you each section one by one so first section is object and you can see that uh, it has all the object list of tables pages code units reports and everything so if you want you can search certain objects okay for example I can type here customer and it will show me the list of all the customers which includes uh, like table or pages or name or anything for example if you select this table you can go to the source code of that it will directly open okay if you want to run this customer table you can just just click run button and it will open that particular object to your web client if you want to bookmark see it is opening up right now and you can see by the URL the table is equal to 18 right now other thing is that if you want to bookmark this object for the later use then you can always do so just select this click on this column and it will be bookmarked for you same goes with other objects let's say I want to bookmark this as well so I can bookmark this as well so now two objects have been bookmarked okay so this is the first thing second column if you see here is that group by currently it is none but if I want to group all my objects into let's say type paste so I can do so and it automatically give me the type based objects that how many types of code units objects are there how many types of pages interfaces enum and everything so that it becomes easy for you to deep down drill down what exactly you want to see same goes with like if you want to go with the module wise then you can go with the module wise see the first preference is my current AL project 8 then base application system applications and so on so this is the use case of the group by column now let's see further the module column so here you can see that if I select the bookmark it is showing me my two bookmark objects which I did earlier so this is the filter which actually helps you to uh, see or to filter only those objects on which you are currently working okay so this is about the bookmark otherwise you can click on current project okay or workspace or like based on your requirement if you select base application it will give you the list of only the objects which belongs to the base application module okay so this is the use case of this field uh, this column called module if you see this section uh, currently it is showing me that I am on my project AL8 okay but if you're working on a workspace then it might be possible that in your workspace uh, you are working on more than one project so it also have this uh, list that currently you are on the workspace on which you are working it has two projects so you can always shift to your different projects based on your workspace 
and AL Explorer will be updated based on that thing only. So I can go to the AL Project 8 and when you click on settings, it will open the app.json of the of your project, right? So this is the thing guys. Now if you see other things like other than the objects, we have seen that in the objects we have uh, all the objects uh, available of BC22 and my AL Project 8. Same goes with like if I go to the events, so it will give me the list of all the events which are the part of the BC22. Okay, wherever like integration events or business events. So it will give me that list. Wait, uh, let me reload this. Okay, go to the AL Explorer, go to the objects, it is currently loading again, yeah, now go to the events and you can see here that now it is showing me the list of all my events based on different, different uh, code units, table, wherever they are available, right, and let's say you want to work on uh certain events so you can always search here on after open page let's say you want this one event so you can select this click on subscribe and now when you uh, let's say you want to use this event so you can just paste it Control v and it will uh, give you the syntax of your event which you have selected there Right, so no need to write down event subscriber then manually write down that whether the object type is page, code unit, which page, which event, no. Simply you just have to search your event here and then just subs click on the subscribe button and it will prepare a code for you. Right, so this is the use case of this events. Then APIs, it will give you the list of all the API projects of your BC22. Uh, on and all the extensions which have been installed which have the API pages so you can see the list from here and this is the extensible enums like okay so if you want to see like you can go to the source and it will give you the list of all the enums all the enum extensions and the enums which have been implementing the interface okay so this is the list through which you can easily see and check out everything now few uh, tricks which you can play here like uh, for example it has these columns available if you want to sort it down you have the flexibility of sorted based on the name based on the related table you just have to place your cursor here and click click and it will do the sorting for you okay based on the bookmark as well it will give you the sorting for you let's say if you want to sort out based on multiple columns then what you have to do, you have to hold down the shift button and then you can select the columns uh, in a sequence that for example, I want first the type, then like ID, then name and so on. Okay, so you can see that my first preference was given to the bookmark because I've already given that. So one number is attached to it, then second number is attached to uh, type then third number is attached to uh, what is this object IDs okay like if you are not seeing the complete name what you can do you can always expand it okay based on which column you want to okay now here's a trick as well that if you want to uh, like extend this column uh, from the right side you can just push put your cursor there and it will give, allow you to expand the right side uh, but let's say if you want to expand from here okay or like uh, what you can do you can just press the shift button and it will now allow you to do the things uh, from here as well from the left side as well 
Okay, so these are the few small tricks which you can use to play with the AL Explorer. Right, so this is the second tip, second thing which I wanted to share with you and you can learn about the AL Explorer. Let's see about the third setting. So for that, let me go back again to the settings. Go to the extensions. Go to the AL language extension. And here, what you can see that we have the code analysis section. See, background code analysis. Earlier, what was happened that if we enable this, then uh, what the thing is that system completely, uh, like system checks our complete project, right? And sometimes if you're working on a workspace, which have multiple projects, a big project, then as soon as you write even a one line of code, it starts checking out the complete project and it might slow down the performance okay then to tackle this we have now a feature a default feature available which is based on the file so what this means that if you if you're working on on a workspace which has big projects then let's say if you're working in in that workspace on any one particular file only so now what the, what happened is that if you write down any code code in your project so system will check only the current file in which you're working and it will not analyze the complete uh, code of your project so this is how the performance will be increased that you want to see currently only the uh, file in which you're working obviously if you want to change you can always change so but the default thing is file only right so this is the thing uh, which i wanted to share in this today's video i hope uh, you have uh, understand now the few nitty gritties the new concepts that features which have been introduced in the business central if you like so thank you very much please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much guys